Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Message Center Show. This week, we've got several messages, some of which are we're going to cover Microsoft Syntex is going to support even more PDFs for optical character recognition. Uh, new calendar experience coming in Teams. Yes, we're going to cover that. And SharePoint ideas, those design ideas coming to SharePoint, helping us build out our pages. That and more on this week's episode. Let's roll it. I rolled it. We're yes. back. Yes. What did you roll? Never mind. Well, the Never mind. intro. Never, no, yeah. <laughs> um, hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 353. I'm three, excited. Three, three, three. Yes. Um, the, 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 we had a good session uh, with our message sorting mm -hmm. uh, live stream. And uh, sure. again, thanks to those who joined and, and helped us work through some of our thinking. Definitely went on some tangents, uh, but that sure. always helps with working out. The, I, I guess I, the general atmosphere of tech yeah. and MS. I mean, I did. Live. I got some feedback that uh, people were thinking that the live show is actually really helpful in not, you know, just cover what should be covered or not, but also the thinking through whether this is something that actually will impact organizations mm. or not. So, yeah. um, I, I, I got some feedback on that. So that's great. And, and if you have feedback, we'd love to hear it. Uh, this week we have, uh, seven messages that we have decided as a group, as listeners and watchers included, of which ones to to cover um make sure you hit us up on socials everybody well while we're here i'm going to go ahead and tell you at 365 mcs everywhere we did get banned from one social but we got reinstated this what? week yep did um, we which one yeah we did mastodon kicked us off um mastodon and, did sure what did. did you post there uh normal stuff about our episodes so they were like uh you're banned and i'm like why and they're like never mind so, uh, yeah, anyway, all the socials that mas that matter and that also Mastodon. Mastodon. <laughs> um, hit us up. Shh, they'll, we'd, they'll hear. We'd love, Shh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd love again. to hear from you. Um, and make sure you share out, you know, word of mouth is the best way to get your friends and other coworkers to uh, know some information about what's going on in Microsoft land. So please share it out with uh with your coworkers and friends do you have like a bulletin board digital or you know in person with a physical one hey how about throwing us up there and letting people know about it that would be awesome greatly appreciate it mm, yep well yeah good to get that conversation going what are yeah, we starting absolutely. with daniel uh the, the, i just want to connect and and uh and share so let me know oh, okay preview new graft connectors for microsoft 365 copilot mc906499 we've talked about uh graph connectors um we've talked about before we've talked about even search connectors where we can bring in additional information. Well, this one is uh, some new graph connectors that we can bring in information so that when we're creating an extension for Microsoft 365 Copilot, it can use that information that's in those other systems. So this is preview. So do with it with that information how you will. But um, this there are what uh, nine on here. Uh, new mm -hmm. graph connectors that are available. Uh, GitHub, Google Drive, files in Google Drive, Jira, Data Center, PostgreSQL, um, Salesforce, Stack Overflow, WordPress, Zendesk, and Zoom meeting transcripts. That one, that one was interesting to me. But um, yeah, yeah. So uh, just again, know that it's preview. Know that it is, though, something that if you're wanting to build extensions for Copilot to really utilize some of that information externally, you know, make it really useful for your people, then, you know, you're going to be using these. Uh, I, you know, I can think of, you know, Jira or um, those Zendesk uh, Help Center. I mean, all of that information uh, being very helpful to reduce the workload for your people. 
right? And get the information in their hands so they don't have to open a ticket or whatever. So anyway, um, this quick mention, but I uh, want to let you know, early preview, so limited slots only, uh, rolling out early October, so uh, now-ish through mid-November, and then targeted release will be mid-November, completed by end of December 2024, with no timeline for uh, general availability. So again, it's preview, they're testing it out, trying to get people to sign up and use this. Um, so if you want to be part of uh, this, jump on the bandwagon. Uh, speaking of bandwagon, I don't know how I'm going to do this. Um, Go on. Go what on. if, you know, the, the bandwagon is coming by and um, you really want to look at it while it's going by outside uh, and you want to also know what emails you're receiving. How how would you be able to look out there, but also wow. get your emails? Yeah, that's yeah. You will see how Daniel's very vaguely connected to it. Once we get into this message, <laughs> new outlook for Windows auto reading emails with Win Microsoft Windows Narrator MC nine zero eight double one three. Uh, we've classed this as another one of those updates, which is bringing the new Outlook experience to more of an equal experience with classic Outlook. And with this, if you are using the Microsoft Windows Narrator, then it will be able to read your emails. Great. And uh, that's uh, good for people who might actually like just this to have emails being read to them in the background and they can put half of their brain into listening to that and half of their brain working on whatever else they're, they're doing. I know, don't don't get too What if you only have half a brain? About, if you only have half a brain, well, maybe you could just have half of a half of a brain. And uh, in which half? I don't know. Right. Which is but, but come on, I I that connection, right? My my lead in was like, I, I felt like it it fit a little bit. I mean, it was a reach, kind but. of. Yeah, yeah, bandwagon and half a brain. Is that what you mean? I guess I don't know. No, okay. But uh, the other aspect of this too is if you're using a screen reader and you are tapping into Microsoft Windows Narrator to use that, then uh, this means that you'll you'll have that uh, equal access to being able to hear those emails being read. Uh, so yeah, again, this is just another quick one. Uh, generally available worldwide. Begin rolling out early November. Expected to be complete late November. Now, let's see if I can come up with something decent here in terms of a segue. Speaking of segues, um, <laughs> what's feeding into this next one mm. might be some disappointment. Um, <laughs> as yeah, look, just you you work with that, Daniel. See what okay. you come up. With. Microsoft 365, parentheses, office, apps. The feed feature will retire starting November 1st, 2024. MC907532. Um, so another feed bites the dust. Ah, do, do, do. <laughs> um, so this is one of those feeds, and we've covered on the show so many feeds. Uh, we've made comments about, hey, there's maybe too many feeds going on and how am I supposed to consume information? But uh, so this one's dying. <laughs> They're getting rid of it. Um, so this is the feed when you go to office.com or Microsoft365.com and over on the left hand rail, you click on feed and it kind of shows you what's going on with the, with your files and, and people working on stuff, what you've worked on. I mean, your 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 feed of 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 what the the content that you've been working on it's being retired uh it'll start november 1st and end by november 15th um so it says after the feature is retired users will no longer be able to use it thanks microsoft um yeah you reckon i guess um so <laughs> this is you know it's something that's only been around it's it, it even says in the message launched in 2022 um, mm. you know, this is, it's, I think a result of people not knowing that it's there cause they didn't watch the show or, uh, they're just inundated with feeds everywhere else. And I, I think that's maybe what it is. 
And uh, I don't know that this is the right one to remove. Um, I know this is a quick mention, mm. and I'm, I'm not going to dive into it, but I feel like a feed should be more higher level than lower level, meaning a feed shouldn't be at every individual app because then – it's just a roll up of that one thing. And so you got to go to every app to f get a feed. It'd be better to have one feed. Anyway, I'm not going down the rabbit hole. I just, um, I'm a little disappointed in this feed being retired when others are still there, I guess. Um, mm. anyway, so I've talked about the dates, uh, November. So get your feed on uh, before November 1st, cause it's going to be rolling out of your tenant. No longer going to be able to use that. Um, but, uh, next up, Daryl, uh, let's yes. talk about how, um, I'm not going to be able to copy and, and paste what you say in meetings anymore. Well, that might be by design, Daniel. And, and this will enable that Microsoft Teams meeting organizers can turn off copying captions, transcripts, and the recap MC 908-115. This is really a security feature, uh, somewhat, because we all know that I can pull out my super squir secret squirrel spy camera and go, got a copy, yay. Uh, but yeah, captions, transcripts, recap, they're wordy type assets that come out of our meetings. And if you wanted to uh, copy and paste and, and use that somewhere else, uh, you can today uh, as a security feature. It'll be an option within meeting options for organizers to select and say, no, I don't want that to happen, thanks. Uh, I don't know how effective this is going to be. There were some good questions in our message sorting live stream about, is this going to affect Copilot and its ability to use the transcript to come up with uh, certain results? It's, it's not. So it's not going to prevent Copilot from, from using this message. Um, rather using the, those meeting assets, yeah. so still good, still important to use. Um, I, yeah. Um, I, the only thing I wanted to say, Daryl, is that they missed something in the title, which is meeting yeah. chat. Meeting chat's included in this, where you can turn it off, oh. but it's not in the title. So it's kind of interesting hmm. that I think that's one of the yeah the largest use cases for this. But anyway, that's more impactful. Yeah. 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 Well, okay. Um, it's mm. a quick mention. Uh, uh, mm. Think about it for yourselves, about whether you would use it or not. One side comment we did have about this is there's a number of things that are beginning to be added to these meeting options that probably are being underused because uh, our organizers typically don't go into meeting options. And so this is where if you are an organization that uses Teams Premium and you have set up your templates for different types of meetings that's going to make it easier to turn on a feature for a certain mm. meeting and uh, and bring those options together our uh, dates targeted release rolling out mid-november complete by late november general availability worldwide that's the first time we've heard that on this mm. show so far We'll begin rolling out in late November 2024 complete by early december and general availability gcc no, okay, that didn't didn't hit the same. GCC mm -hmm. High DoD will be enrolling out January 2025, expected to be complete early January 2024. What? Mm -mm. We're going backwards here, people. Typo. Yeah, oh, totally. Hmm. But um, there we go. Uh, like I think that if if we had some help with recognizing that that was uh, an incorrect typing or character, um, then we might have had a better result from that. So, Daniel, tell us about what service might make sense of this if this was in a PDF form. Wow. <laughs> I thought I was trying to figure out, you know how you've seen those videos of like airplanes about to land on an aircraft carrier <laughs> and they go haywire and you're like, yeah. how in the world is that going to land on there? That's exactly where I was with you with that transition. I'm like, how's he going to land this? Microsoft Syntax Optical Character Recognition, OCR, will support PDF files with images, MC907534. Now, um, I, I think what uh, is 
interesting here is is not the title, but um, I think the title is actually a little wrong. Um, it's saying it will support PDF files with images. Well, that's what it's always supported is is files that have Im that are image based and it does OCR on it. This is basically what it's saying is all PDFs that it's going to process that are hybrid, meaning that they have um, both text, which you know you can think of the difference here. So PDFs can be two one of two things really is text or picture. Text is like you go into Word and you type out a document and then you save it as a PDF. Well, that's a text-based document. You know, you can when you open it up in a PDF previewer, you, you know, you can s select the text. It 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 knows it's a text base. But if you took that same PDF and you uh, or same Word document and printed it, and then put it on a scanner and scanned it into a PDF that would be an image based uh, unless your scanner does OCR but we're not going to go there so it's an image based so there's two types what this is saying is if you have a PDF that's both think about whether you have like a text based one and an image based PDF and you and you combine those uh, through a process or um, maybe you have a document that uh, that was created in some system even word where you have an image in that word document that is has text and then you save that as a PDF. Well, now it has text and it has an image with text. So syntax is going to be able to process that. Um, I, that was a lot of lead up to hopefully I've, I've described that well so people understand <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That, that this is a big thing because that means I, as, a, uh, as someone who's responsible for this content that is being processed by syntax, so being processed and extracting metadata and maybe I'm automating the, um, pro, you know, moving files around based upon metadata, et cetera. I don't have to be responsible whether I'm receiving and putting in there PDFs that are op, that are images versus PDFs that are already, you know, just text-based. So um, it's on by default. It'll, be, it'll happen automatically. General availability worldwide will begin late October 2024, expect to be completed by early November of 2024. Um, so we just finished the quick mentions section of the show, and we've got a couple of standard Racing ones that we want to talk about. Yeah. Um, you know, I, but I think what we need to do is uh, kind of maybe we need to create a calendar entry. You know, let's create a meeting about this, uh, how we're going to organize this standard section of the show. Um, so, you know, let's talk about calendars. Let's do that. Yeah. Um, nicely connected to Microsoft okay. Teams new calendar experience, MC908116. Say what? New calendar experience? I thought that it was enough. What we currently have? Apparently not. Well, actually, definitely not. <laughs> um, Daniel and I, we, when we're using uh, the calendar in either Teams or Outlook, they are similar experiences and definitely details are shared across you know, it's the same meetings, but you have to do, you have, there's some things you can't do in um, the Teams calendar that you can do in Outlook and vice versa. Uh, this is going to be bringing uh, the a unified same experience together, whether you are in New Outlook or in Teams using the calendar. Uh, I believe uh, that's, I think it's going to be based on the Outlook calendar. And just trying to really, you know, bring those details together. Now, this will have um, will have definite uh, benefits because uh, we don't have to, you know, go into one place, set up the meeting. Uh, if you're into using uh, the the loop experience and adding the agenda, well, you've got to do that in Teams. But then, if you want to go over and have a fuller experience of certain things, you can go into Outlook. Mixed experience. Uh, it's going to be a opt-in experience, Daniel. Uh, so uh, you can be stick with the standard calendar that you have in Teams, but it's, it follows that usual pattern of let's opt in, see how people feel about it, get their feedback. What do you think? Well, what do you think, Daniel? Is this a good approach? Well, I, I think, and we've talked to consistency, consistency, consistency. I, you know, we want the experience to be consistent. Calendar is a function that is shared with Outlook and Teams. It just is, whether we like it or not. Um, and 
I want the same experience in both. I want to be able, mm-hmm. I don't want it to matter where I'm at. I'm creating a meeting invite. I want it to be exactly the same. Now, when you create an item in teams, it's automatically going to make it a teams meeting. Um, okay. I can kind of understand that, but frankly, I want it to be the same exact experience as outlook. I, I really do. I, 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 I don't like this whole, Oh, it matters where you start. I, I don't, I don't like that at all. Um, you know, and I'm thinking about like Microsoft 365 groups, for instance, you know, <laughs> it matters where you create that thing. Uh, I, I don't mm. like that at all. And I don't like it in, in calendars. Um, so I like this. Absolutely. I wish I had pictures. Um, we don't have any indication of what it's going to look like. So that's not great. I uh, really wish we could have that, but um, I think, you know, maybe an indication of that is if you look at the timing, which I know you'll get to, um, it seems like maybe they're, you know, propping, you know, this will be something that might be announced during a certain conference. So, um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I really like, I mean, it has some text description here. Great. Um, you know, talking about yeah. the, the service feature, the calendar service features and, and everything again, I just want it to work and, and look exactly like Outlook. And I don't care which one they pick. Like, <laughs> I just want it to be the same is all. Hmm. Uh, well, I mean, let's just talk about a couple of those bullet points. So maybe we can yeah. form a picture and a reminder about what that looks like. Enhanced meeting creation. So you can quickly create a, a calendar appointment within Teams and schedule. It's the same scheduling form. Uh, a peak view experience where you can, I guess, click into a meeting and quickly see the asset mm. so that you can prepare for that meeting if there's attachments and various things mm-hmm. that might be there. Weather integration. Oh, okay. Well, that could be mm-hmm. useful. But work plan integration, sort of leaning into the um, the uh, places, Microsoft places, and some of those features coming in yeah. too. Um, so, yeah, these are, these are all... Uh, I think the good thing is that it's going to be a unified experience, but yeah, I'm with you. We want to see what this looks like. Is it safe enough to say, imagine Outlook calendar and the new Outlook, that's what it'll be like, but purple. (laughs) You know, one thing, you know, that last one might be something that people will uh, really like, which is actually popping out the team's calendar, um, you know, as a pop out. So you could do that now. Um, can we with the new calendar? Do you have the new calendar? Is that what it is? No, no, no. I mean, we could do it with the current calendar. I'm sure of it. Okay. Oh, no. Just mm. unpin. Okay. Mm. There you go. So, uh, you know, Feature. that could be, you know, if you have multi windows, multiple uh, screens, you know, being able to pop that mm. out and throw it over here so you can keep track of what's going on in your day. I mean, that's that's what yep. I do with Outlook. So... You know, I think it's yeah. great. You know, there's one thing that uh, is not said in this message hmm. specifically, but it's perhaps leading to it. Question, hmm. will this mean we'll actually see Outlook inbox and the various different folders within Teams? Got nothing to do with this, but people will be asking, why can't we just have the whole thing in there? Hmm. Yeah. And when you mean people, you mean me and, and lots of other persons in the world People. i you know i feel like uh you know there's heavy resistance in the product team i wish there would be somebody who's maybe over both teams and outlook to come in and go guys and gals like come on that we want people to be in teams all the time sure well then <laughs> they can't because they got to do email and anybody who says you should get rid of email well they're just you know, they don't, they're just not living in reality. And so, because even internally, yeah, you want to get rid of email. Okay, fine. But you still have got to communicate externally. So anyway, mm-hmm. I just feel like it, it, I don't know. It would be really nice if they want us to live in teams, then to give us all the things we need. But right now the, uh, oh no, I was going to make a terrible joke. Oh, uh, I was going to say out. Resist. The outhouse is back there. Anyway, I was going to um, equate Outlook. To, anyway, it was bad. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Well, look, we just don't have dates. everything in the house. You know what I mean? We just don't. 
Yeah. And actually, no, I see where you're going with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. targeted release will begin rolling out mid-November, and that's our clue as to w- why we'll probably hear about it in detail at Microsoft Ignite. Uh, complete by late November, general availability worldwide will begin rolling out mid no, mid January 2025. Complete late January. And our last message, Daniel, I've mm-hmm. got an idea about what you should say in this message. Um, mm. By design, I will not. <laughs> Okay, okay. (laughs) Anyway, Microsoft SharePoint design ideas is now available, MC908, one-to-one. This is a, you know, kind of a now available deal. We, I can't remember if we specifically talked about design ideas uh, before Mm -hmm. on the show. I I, I just can't remember. Uh, But the, um, this is a, is really a functionality that SharePoint's going to help you really design the sections on your pages in, in SharePoint. So think of it as, you know, a page, and this is the way I equate it when I'm trying to teach people how, what does this mean? Think of a SharePoint page if, if that was equal to a PowerPoint file. And mm. each section on a SharePoint page is a slide. So if you think about when you're working in PowerPoint and design ideas there, when you're on a slide, it goes, oh, you could do this with this slide. And then when you move on to the next slide, it goes, oh, you could do this with this slide. Same thing here. When you're in a section on SharePoint, it will give you a suggestion of, oh, here's some something you could do with this section and make it pop, you know, make it exciting. <laughs> um, I, I, I mean, you know, if you're creating a page and you don't want people to look at it, okay, fine, make it boring. But... Typically, when you're creating SharePoint page, you want people to actually look at it and use it and use the information. So um, that's what this is. So there's some great screenshots. Thank you, SharePoint team, for putting those in there. Give yourself a pat on the back. Uh, and it's uh, you know giving you that op- uh, opportunity to do some amazing things. One thing that I think is um, banner is is really where you know, this kind of design ideas to help you, you know, create a nice banner uh, in the section uh, for your page so that it looks nice, right? So that it, it, again, that it pops, that people go, ooh, this is, a, I like this page. I want to look at this. For the initial release, and that does imply there's going to be improvements and there will be, this will only support sections that have a banner web part. So the, you know, the one banner um, one, two, or three uh, text web parts, one, two, or three text and image web parts, um, or one blank text web part. You know, and, and so, yes, this will expand. If your section has other things, it's not going to support that. It won't give you that for right now, but um, it will uh, work for those options. Daryl, I'm, I'm thinking you like this. I, I'm not sure why anybody would hate this. Because even if you don't use design idea, what it suggests, it can still give you ideas, right, to what yeah. to do. Yeah, that's right. I, I um, will be able to work with it in its limited capacity uh, initially, but I see its potential for when it supports more content that um, being able to just select and say, I want to put this, this, and this on the page, now give me some ideas about how I could lay that out. Uh, that'll be helpful. I also like mm-hmm. how it is uh, section by section because if you have this expectation that create me a page with multiple sections and uh, uh, you know multiple different ways of laying these things out, uh, that there'd be a lot of possibilities there. So section by section, I think, is the right way to do it. Um, yeah, looking forward to to using this. And one kind of workaround, and I haven't tried this yet, but I was just thinking about it. If you use a design ideas on a section and you get it right and you're like, oh, I want to add another web part that's not supported right now, we'll do it afterwards, right? You got yeah. it's designed the way you want it. Okay, now add the web part that, that isn't supported and move it around. I mean, so just play around with it, people, um, mm-hmm. because targeted release available now, general availability worldwide available now. So you can play with it right now. So go do it. And I'm giving you permission to go right. do that because show's over. We have covered all of the messages. So now you can go do that. But you need to give the thumbs up to the video. Give the thumbs up. 
If you're on the audio podcast, please give us a five star rating on that podcast platform, whatever platform you're on. We're on all of them. Please give us that. So the thumbs up and the star ratings, those help other people find the show. Um, you know, we'd love to have more po- people join. So that's all that is. Share out this episode link. We'd greatly Especially on that. Mastodon. No, we can't do it for ourselves, but if you do it for us, then we won't get banned. Yes, we can. We're not banned anymore. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, everybody, for being here and participating. Uh, love your comments on all the episodes. Keep them coming. And until next time, we want you to have a fantastic week. Bye for now. Bye now.